Coming up next, I'm going to give you three signs that it is time to quit your job. And then another crisis in the healthcare industry will break that down. And of course, work fail Fridays in your calls, and it starts right now. All right, folks, welcome to the Ken Coleman Show. Thrilled to have you with us. We are here to talk about you specifically, what you were born to do. You were created to fill a unique role. You are needed, and that means you must do it. Simply put, somebody out there needs you to show up and be you. So there's some real meaning there. And the reality is that there's work that you're really good at and work that you love, and you put all that together, talent, what you do best, passion work you love, mission results that matter to you. And when those three elements are in alignment, you are on purpose, that is a dream job, that description. And the money and the meaning will be there. The income is there. The impact is there. That's what I want for you. Life is too short for you to spend all that time that you spend at work and not be in that purposeful sweet spot. So that's what we do no matter where you are in the journey. I don't know what it is. I know what it is, but I don't know how to get there. Or I know what it is. I know how to get there, but I got some junk holding me back. We can help you. What stage are you in? We'll get you to the next. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. All right. A lot of people quitting their jobs, right? Nearly 9 million people over the last two months have moved on. It is musical chairs right now. I mean, people are quitting like crazy. So I thought, all right, Let's give you some basic signs that if these signs are happening right now for you, (laughs) it's time. Now, the question is, are you going to do it or not? But I'll help you with that, too. But let's just help you. You know, there's a comedian, a a comedian, he's a friend of um, Jeff Foxworthy. And uh, his name is Bill Ingvall, and he's got this little routine. Here's your sign. You know what I mean? It's basically, here's your sign that you're stupid or whatever. That's his little beat. These are some signs. If any of these are your signs, it might be time to move on. Maybe a different seat on the same bus or maybe getting off the bus altogether. Let's go through them. Here we go. First, you don't care about your work. You just don't care. Now, I I, I want to delineate here. You, you might be doing a decent job. It's not like you're just completely checked out and you're not doing the work, but you don't care about the work. You're doing your job and you're not getting reprimanded or whatever, but you don't care. So when I say you don't care about the job, I mean you don't have any juice. I got the juice. I, I love this. I mean, you you could hit me upside the head, give me some type of cold. You could... My back is killing me right now. I've been to the chiropractor three times this week. It's unbelievable. My lower back's killing me right now. But I'm having the time of my life. Why? Is it because I'm tougher than you? No, I'm not. I'm a big, giant wimp. All right? Uh, Is it that I'm uh, more committed than you? Mm, No. It's that I love the work. I love the work. I love coaching people. I love communicating. I love equipping. I love encouraging. I love it. I didn't have to come in today. I could have called Joe and said, Joe, the back is stiff. Uh, I need to rest it a little bit. Could have done it. Not going to do it. And again, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm trying to explain to you the juice, love of the work, the result, mission of my work. If one person needed to hear me today and I encourage them and I give them something that just keeps them going or something that allows them to experience breakthrough, it's worth it. Why the crap do I want to sit at home? My back's going to hurt wherever I am, right? But I'm going to tell you, you won't do that if you don't care about the work. If you don't care about the work, you won't push through. If you don't care about the work, you won't excel. And if you don't care about the work, you won't progress so whether you realize it or not if you don't care about the work you're not putting in the best form of the work you're not giving your best you might be doing a fine job but you're not doing your best 
you don't care about your work. Now, I want to just point out one thing around the holidays because I think it's important. Some of this could be you've got some big anxiety, maybe some depression stuff you're dealing with, and so you just don't care much about anything because you're just trying to make it through. I want to call that out. But if it's about the love of the work, you don't love the work, you don't care deeply about the results of the work, I got news for you. It's time. Next one. They're just not that into you. (laughs) I think there's a rom-com that uh, I don't know if it's she's not that into you or he's not that into you. Is it she? What's the name of that movie? It's she. Yeah, she's just not that into you. It's a movie I saw with my wife once. Okay, great. We have some audience members that are, thank you for bailing me out. That You know, it's like, hey, I get this call all the time. Hey, Ken. I've, I've, I've asked for this promotion and this promotion, and they keep passing me over. What am I doing wrong? And at the end of the day, it's like you're not doing anything wrong. They're just not that into you. It's like the girl that, that you try to ask out, and she always has to wash her hair. It's like, how is that possible? I asked her out on a Saturday night. She had to wash her hair. I asked her out on a Friday night. She had to wash her hair. She's washing her hair all the time. Then you see her out with somebody else, and you go, oh. I had a sneaky suspicion it wasn't her washing her hair. They're just not that into you. That's a sign. They're not promoting you. They don't see potential in you. They've passed you over. They're not that into you. That's a sign. There's no there's no future. There's a lid. Number three, the work environment has become toxic. It's, it's gross. Now, listen, I want to just quick, 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 quick detail here. We throw this word toxic around way too much these days oh i've got a toxic workplace oh really how's it toxic well i got this one guy fred who's been really grumpy and he's always complaining that's not toxic that's just fred okay fred doesn't sleep enough fred's grumpy i don't know what fred's problem is but just because fred irritates the ever-living snot out of you doesn't make your workplace toxic can we just can we own this for a second like do toxic is we're talking abusive verbally emotionally maybe even worse toxic is corruption illegal activity toxic is a big difference between well you know i got a couple of problem people on my team hey listen good luck if you think that's toxic you might as well go live in a bubble inside of a padded room if you want to avoid difficult people. But difficult people in circumstances doesn't make it toxic. So when I say toxic, I mean pretty rough stuff. There is a culture of dishonesty, a culture of abuse, a culture of ignoring people, a culture of cheating clients, cheating. I mean, okay, you understand what I'm saying? That's toxic. All right. So those are the three signs. You don't care much at all about your job. They're just not that into you, and the work environment is truly toxic. So what's the big takeaway? Before you leave, because these are signs it's time to go, but what's the very first process? Start to dream. Start to imagine. I'm a big Walt Disney fan. I've read about five or six books on him. My wife and I love Disney. We take our kids to Disney all the time. It's just it's a place of imagination. And dreams develop from imagination. I am imagining a desired future. I am imagining. And here's the deal. If you're not careful, if you're in this kind of environment, you know what you've done? You have shut off imagination. You're just trying to get through. You're just trying to ignore all of these signs. It's the human nature. It doesn't make you a bad person. But can I tell you, you better start to imagine. Because when you begin to imagine, and your heart begins to refire and it begins to, to see things and feel things that you haven't seen or felt in a long time. And at that point, you can jump into my process, get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job, give yourself away. So we got the process. I got the book from paycheck to purpose. It'll walk you through the whole thing. If you need to get clear, you need a quick deep dive, the Get Clear Career Assessment, bundle it. I think it's only 40 bucks for both products at KenColeman.com. I've got the tools. But before I ever tell you to buy a tool or use a tool, 
you must first begin to imagine and dream again if you're in one of these situations. And then we figure out where we're going to go. 844-747-2577 is the phone number. 844-747-2577. By the way, I want to tease something. I'll tease it again in a few minutes. I got a fun little surprise coming up in the show. Uh, Nathan, the director, and I, we were talking about this. We're very excited. So that's coming up. But first, let's get to the phones. 844-747-2577. Austin joins us in Atlanta, Georgia. Austin, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks for talking to me today. You bet. Um, So I actually have done the uh, Get Clear assessment, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk with you for just a second about the results I got, my purpose statement, because I'm looking at going into family therapy, and it's something that kind of resembles some of the suggestions you had there at the end. But before I go and spend six years going to school, I want to see what you think and see if you think that that would line up. Oh, I love because this. obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to get qualified, but you know, so yeah, let's statement, do it. Read it for okay. me. Okay. Yeah, I was created to use my talents of instruction, organization, and justice to perform my passions of protecting, advising, and caregiving to accomplish my mission of influence. Okay, give me the first three again, because uh, I don't write sure. as fast as you speak. Instruction. <laughs> Sorry. Your top. Th- no, 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 no. This is part of the deal, uh-huh. man. I'm the one that created the assessment. It's just beautiful when you read it <laughs> off that fast. But I'm here going like, ah, I can't keep up. Uh, instruction, organization, and the third one was justice. Justice. Okay, so correct. I so I did catch it. Okay, my brain's still working. And then uh, your top three passions: work you love, protecting, advising. advising. And, and caregiving. Caregiving. Okay. And influence mm-hmm. was your missional driver. Yes, sir. Okay. So when, when you got your test results back, how did it feel? Did it feel right on? For the most part, yes. Okay. There was a couple that I took a look at and went, ah, that doesn't quite line up. And then the more I read your definitions, the more I went, yep, yeah, he's got it. Oh, like, great. Okay. He's dead on. Great. Okay. I love that. People go, Kim, why do you put yourself out there live on the show like that? This guy's <laughs> got Because here's the deal. Because I know it works. Yeah. So here's what happened. It worked. Well, here's what happened. You saw the you saw the words and and everybody's got context around a word. You were like, I don't know. And then you read what I mean by the word and you went, Oh, the guy's reading my mail. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, good. So your question is, is family therapy, <laughs> family counseling with a focus yeah. on what, what specific um, part, like, is there a specialty in family counseling that you're really looking to, to dive in on, the problems you're looking to solve? I'm fairly broad at this point. There's been a That's lot of fine. prayer going into this. I'm very passionate about broken homes Got it. and kids of divorced families. Okay, um, I'm a kid of that, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, so is my son. Got so it. that's something I'd like to see okay. break those chains All right, that so legacy. This is awesome, folks. So here's Austin's question. Hey, Ken. I'm really, really intrigued. I think that my dream job is family therapy, being a counselor. Does that match up with my purpose statement? And uh, let's just walk through this and let you answer it, Austin, and you at home can follow along. Okay. Instruction. Organization. Justice. So instruction means you are talented at teaching, explaining revealing true or false absolutely all right that was what i did for the army and i loved it and then you're very organized you just you think in compartments and can play stuff where it needs to go structure is easy for you yes okay and then justice justice so this is the one when we wrote the assessment the team asked me a lot of questions about and uh-huh. I chose the word justice on purpose because I believe it is a talent. And, and what I meant by justice, as you read it, it obviously plays with you, but it's all about righting wrongs. You have a natural, a gap. yeah, you have a natural ability to, to see what's wrong and, and, and what needs to be right. You see it, you feel it instantly. And, and that's a big part of what you're gifted at is seeing that and knowing what needs to be done. True or false? That's the one that hits my core the most. Oh, I love, ooh, I like that. All right. So now we move into passion. You love protecting. That's why you went in the Army. You're a protector. You love Mm -hmm. advising. 
You love advising. You love yeah. taking a situation, listening, breaking it down, and then coming up with a plan to come out of it. And you love caring for others. That protecting and caregiving, those two are inextricably connected. That's who you are. And then your missional driver. Now, for those who haven't taken the assessment, there are six motivators. This is from psychology research. I did the research. I pulled them together and I said, okay, I want people to understand where motivation comes from. Motivation isn't about looking in the mirror and going, all right, you got this, man. Go, go, go. I mean, it's nuts. That's like an energy drink. Good luck with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like I can, I, can, I can drink one of those ridiculous energy drinks these kids drink these days and I come across as motivated. I'm not motivated. I'm over-caffeinated. There's a huge difference. Motivation <laughs> means it's my why. When we go to court and the prosecutor is trying to prosecute a criminal, they are trying to prove to the jury that there is motive for the despicable illegal act. Why would the person kill this person? Motive. It's where we most use that word is in a legal context. But it's the root word of motivation. And for you to do counseling work, why do you want to counsel? Families. Change lives. You want to yeah. transform. You want to influence. And that's why influence was your number one result. So I walked through these with you. I wanted the audience to come along with us. You answer the question. Is being a family therapist on purpose for you? Does it align with your purpose statement? Yes or no? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to throw that in there. <laughs> Feels good. All right. It? Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. It's good to know you're not nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're not nuts. You're not nuts at all. Uh, so now here's why this is important. I'm so glad you called today to walk through this. Because we have a lot of people that are taking the assessment. And they're going, hey, Ken, I got my purpose statement. You nailed me. Now what? I got to figure out what to do. It's like, I can't do that for you. My goodness. But you got to look at that purpose statement and go, where are all the areas in the world of work where I can do that? And for you, you were like, it's counseling. And so we look at that and we go, okay, great. And so you are going to face, as you move forward on this journey, Austin, let me tell you what you're about to face. You're going to face all kinds of fear and doubt. And that's a sign. Yeah. And that's a sign that you're moving forward. It's not a sign that you're wrong. You ever met anybody that's never experienced fear and doubt? They're bleacher creatures. It's all they do is sit on the bleachers and watch the rest of us. What, like what could they Yeah, well, listen, what could they possibly fear? What could they possibly fear? Mm -hmm. they're, they're sitting on the stands. Like, okay, I'm going today. This afternoon, I'm going to Indianapolis to watch my beloved Michigan Wolverines play in the Big Ten Championship. Now, at the end of the day, I care deeply about the Wolverines. More on that later. But when I sit in the stands tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, I'll have some tension. I'll have some anxiety that's just about my team. But I don't have any real fear. My biggest fear is I hope I don't spill my nachos on my pants in the middle of the second quarter. My biggest fear is at the parking lot. I might have to wait for 45 minutes. Are you with me, folks? That's, that's not real fear. Like, fear is, is I'm going to invest thousands of dollars in this education to, to launch a business, and I'm afraid that maybe I'm not going to be good enough to build a practice that will take care of my family. Now, that's fear. Come on. Am I right, Austin? You're dead correct, sir. So here's the deal. You're going to face fear, and you're going to face doubt. But that's part of the journey when we're on purpose. It means you're doing something. And every time the voice of fear comes up and says, you're not going to be able to do it, I want you to come back to that purpose statement and ask yourself, do I have the talent to do this? And the answer is unequivocally yes. And you come back to that purpose statement and you say, do I love, do I have a passion for this work? The answer is unequivocally yes. And then I say, do I care? deeply about influencing the lives of families that are on the verge of destruction. More than anything in the world. There's some emotion on you right now. 
Yeah. And it's because you've experienced that pain. And, <laughs> and you want to help others avoid it. And you want to help others come out of it. Am I right? That is exactly correct. All right. So here's the deal. The reason I took you there is I want you to remember that feeling. Because when the voice of fear and the voice of doubt comes at you, you just say, shut up. Get behind me, Satan. This is what I'm supposed to do, and I know it, and I'm going to keep going. You understand me? Yes, sir. All right, my man. Appreciate you. He's going to, let me tell you something right now. Austin is going to make an unbelievable impact in the lives of families. And when he does, it will all be worth the struggle, the rejection, all of it. Can I just tell you? I'm telling you, man. I'm I'm starting to well up right now. I, I gotta I gotta get to the next call. I'll start crying because I remember how hard my journey was. And it's worth it. Just to get to talk to Austin. You gotta know your why, folks. If your why doesn't make you cry, it ain't your why. And I don't mean walking around boo-hooing all the time. I just mean it moves your heart. Now a good snot cry every once in a while is good because it kind of reminds you and it refreshes you. Make sure you got some tissue close by. Lynn is up next in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Lynn, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm living the dream. What's going on? So I am a work from home, um, but my company is requiring me to have the COVID vaccine in order to keep my job. So I work from home. I don't go into my company's facility. And I don't go into any of my customers. Yeah, it makes total uh, sense. Matt makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so I personally, for a lot of reasons, don't want to get the vaccination. Mm. Um, I work from home. I don't deal with anybody. But what do I do moving forward? Do I try to file an exemption? Sure, I would. I'd take every shot that you can. Um, because I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know your company. I'll just tell you what I know because I've asked a lot of people and I've got my ear to the ground on this. Um, mm-hmm. I know of nurses in the greater Nashville area who are working for hospitals. Boy, this is going to freak some people out when I say this, but this is the truth. Uh, who filed a religious exemption, which that, that is a that's a pretty flimsy argument. I'm just I call it from both sides, but they filed it. And mm-hmm. the hospital didn't even mess with it. They just granted it. It was very quiet, though. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what I don't know about your company is, are they super, super serious about this? Um, they, or they are, are they just kind of saying this out loud and then quietly behind the scenes? If if employees uh, go through the process of exemption, they're, they're granting them without much hullabaloo. That's what I don't know. So they're a government contractor. Oh, well, they have to. Yes, they have to. All right, so that means you got to start looking. You can file. I would take every shot you could to get out of it, but um, knowing that you need to be prepared to move on. And so do you think that filing, like, a religious exemption would put a target? No. Or No. No? No. No, it's it's not going to put a target. They're either going to rubber stamp it yes or rubber stamp it no. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Well, that, I just, I'm afraid because my husband's company is probably going to be doing the same thing, and then we both be out of a job. Well, so this is an urgent matter. Yeah. So you know what we do? We realize. Wait a second. The sky's not falling. You're very talented. You have a lot of experience. You listen to my show, so you have a pretty darn good idea how to look for something that's a really good fit for you, and you start looking now because here's where we are. We are also in the hottest hiring economy we've ever seen. So companies are looking for talent. I don't think I'd have a hard time finding a job. I don't think so either. I'm very marketable, and this one actually kind of fell in my lap after two years of being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. Hey, start looking today. Okay. Seriously, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Uh, It's a free resource. I endorse it every day because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? It takes you five minutes. Upload your resume, fill out the profile, and let them start shopping you. They'll give you updates the whole nine yards. I talk about it every day. But my point okay. is, is that's in addition to everything else I tell you. But you know what you're looking for. Start looking today. I tell your husband the same deal. You guys need to take the bull by the horns. Don't wait for the bull to stab you in the rear end. 
Right. Okay. This is unfortunately okay. where we sit today. And who knows yeah. how long they're going to keep this stuff up. We have no idea. So um, you got to take take action. Control what you can control. You cannot control mandates, but you can control your ability to go get something else. So I am sorry, and it makes me very upset that people are being put in this position, but it is what it is. So there ain't no sense griping about it. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Appreciate you, Lynn. Thanks for the call. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Okay. Um, fun thing here. When we come back, I'm going to explain this and have a little bit of fun with it. When we come back. There it is. Thank you very much. That, that's usually the cue to start the feed into commercials. Very good. Have a little bit of fun with that. We surprised Joe. He has no idea what's coming up. It threw him out of his normal rhythm. Don't move. This is the Ken Coleman Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org. We absolutely believe in it. You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. The world needs what you have to offer. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. And then there's others of you who are saying, I know what I want to do. I know how to get there, but fear, family, doubt, finances are holding me back. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are. And I can tell you, there's hope. You can get there. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. It is a clear path that through seven stages will walk you through the journey to be who you were created to be. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire in your work. And the world needs what you have to offer. Somebody out there needs you to show up and be your best. And I know that you have what it takes. All right, there it is, folks. You've always wanted to see me in an oversized helmet. It doesn't fit. If, if, if I don't hold them face masks, watch what happens. I look like the little kid who, you know, is five years old. He's got the oversized pads on. And this is what they do. They're, they're like looking for the ball. Where's the ball? Where is the ball? All right, there it is. So uh, why do I have my uh, beloved Michigan Wolverine helmet on? Um well, folks, I have to gloat because it's been a long time. And if you've been watching the show for any amount of time, I used to have this this beautiful, gorgeous helmet, by the way. Best-looking football helmet in the history of the world. That is not debatable. So you in the chat room, if you don't like it or you've got a uh, – like if Nathan thinks the Vikings helmet is better than this, he's lost his mind. I mean, please, look at this thing. That says strength and uh, champion. The winningest football program – in college football history. So anyway, uh, we've been through a really down time. And I got criticized at home by this. Some friends as well. You're giving up on it. I didn't give up on it. I'm still a fan. But I used to have it on the shelf um, in the old studio and in the studio as well. But I got so irritated by their lack of ability to beat their rival, Ohio, the Buckeyes, uh, that I took it off the shelf. I remember, Joe, I told you, I said, I'm taking it off the shelf. I cannot get behind this brand. I cannot proudly lift a brand that is subpar. And that was a hard decision for you to make. So anyway, here's the deal. I decided to surprise everybody. Joe didn't know I was going to do this. I told Nate that we were going to do this. We're going to put it back in a place of honor on the shelf. Now, I don't know if this is the permanent place, but we'll get right back to the show. But here's the deal, folks. We beat Ohio. We're going to the Big Ten Championship. If we beat the Iowa Hawkeyes on Saturday night, we go to the playoff. And I'm a very happy camper right now, so I'm going to act like a fan, which is short for fanatic. 
Okay, so I'm putting it back on the shelf, Joe. Here we go. So there it is. So there it is. We'll, we'll put it right there, and that's not its permanent place. But uh, for today's show, uh, that's what we're going to do. So, so there you go. Um, and if you are a Michigan fan, uh, I'd love to hear from you in the chat room, or you can follow me on Instagram. If you're going to be in Indianapolis for the Big Ten game, uh, Amanda, during the commercial break, just sent me a text of some great sports bars because she, she knows those. So we're going to have a big time taking my middle son up. It's going to be a lot of fun. How's my toupee, by the way? Because this is a new one, and I'm afraid the helmet pulled the, glo- the, the uh, glue off. Can I borrow it? Yes. you can. Boy, Joe, you do need it. And, and, and we, see, that would be a bonus for you. It would be more hair and dark hair. Um, so maybe I'll make a donation to you. Maybe I'll grow my hair out and make a donation to you. So there you go. All right, uh, folks, uh, we've got a bit of a crisis going on in one of the most important areas of our working sector. And this is interesting. I want to break it down. Let's get to it in the news. Okay, so U.S. News and World Report headline says U.S. faces crisis of burned out health care workers. Now, we've heard from nurses Many times I've never heard from a doctor on this, but I have had nurses call this program and this is absolutely true. And it is it is scary stuff. Uh, Just a couple of nuggets here from this article that I think are important for you to know. Before the pandemic, physicians were twice at risk for burnout compared to the general population. This is pre pandemic. About 40 percent of those surveyed reported depression and suicidal ideation. Wow. These are physicians, folks. Um, increases in patient volume, the demands of making healthcare more businesslike, the pressure of meeting more regulations and requirements and other factors have left providers feeling overwhelmed and less time to spend one-on-one with patients. This is from a panel of physicians and doctors. The situation has deteriorated further since the start of the pandemic with, you ready for this? Between 60 and 75% of clinicians reporting symptoms of exhaustion, depression, sleep disorders, and PTSD. These are the physicians that are taking care of us. And by the way, if anybody's questioning what I'm saying here, I'm not saying that's their fault. I'm saying we have some systemic problems. This is a wake-up call, Americans, and we better do our part to figure this out. What's our part? I think we as patients have got to stand up and go, hey, there's too much paperwork. There's all this crap. This is affecting our doctors. Our doctors want us to say that. They need the groundswell. There is a need for healthcare workers to focus on the long game. All health systems, this is from uh, Dr. Zhao, who is a part of this panel. hope I'm saying his name right. All health systems need to invest in preventative strategies making system level change. Hospitals and healthcare systems need to create chief wellness officers to oversee the well-being of hospital staffers and to reduce demands on physicians such as dealing with difficult technology, especially electronic health record systems so they can focus on caring for patients. He emphasized these frontline workers must also feel safe to speak out about these burnout issues without fear of being stigmatized. So this is a big issue and I say all this, I report this because I think we have a lot of healthcare workers who listen to this program, who watch this program. And, and listen, you've got to get some help outside or inside. If they don't give it to you inside, you've got to get some help outside. You can't be afraid of this stuff. You're too important. They're not going to let you go. There's a huge need for nurses and doctors. And, I, and here's the final point and probably the primary point that I'm, I want to make. You are so valuable and so in demand. You can put your foot down. You don't have to act like a toddler and scream and go home. But if you're afraid of confrontation, you don't need to be. Because you are so valuable that you need to put your foot down and go, this has got to change. Doctors, nurses, listen to me. It's got to change. And you can make the change because you're so valuable. you got to say, hey, we're not doing this anymore. It's got to change. And we, the people, the patients, have got to support you. And for these clinicians, can I tell you something? This health care, all the, all the tech, all the uh, regulations from the government and all the, the insurance company garbage, it's become big business. It's not about caring for people. And if I'm a clinician right now, I'm looking at going, you know what? How can I 
circumnavigate the system and go old school. Go cash. And go to my patients and go, we're going to take care of 300 families. And we're going to give you unbelievable care. We're going to get back to caring for patients. And we don't need all this stupid paperwork and stuff. You can pay for this, 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 and this. I mean, it takes some ingenuity here and some innovation and some guts. But I think there's something to this. And I think we, the people, ought to talk to our doctors about it. Give them some confidence you're going to stay with them, that you can pay them. By the way, it's going to end up being a cost savings for you. I want to get back to the old days where the doctors came to our houses. I'm in. I'm in. It's time. Shock the system a little bit. 844-747-2577. By the way, I mentioned ZipRecruiter uh, recently to uh, one of our callers. But for the rest of you, I want to remind you, this is an unbelievable service. That It's not just for that caller. You're looking to switch right now. I don't know why you wouldn't be engaging with the number one job site in the country to at least start to get some momentum going. It takes minutes to fill out a profile and upload your resume at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. It's free to you. And they give you updates every time you get a look, a like, or a request for your contact information. They put companies directly in touch with you. The minute you upload the profile, their database takes over and they start pitching you and actively pushing your resume as a candidate to companies that are on their website with postings. ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. All right. It's a Friday. Let's have a little bit of fun. This is always fun for me. It's time for Friday Work Fails. All right. This is the office prank edition. So we've got some uh, visuals for you, those of you uh, that are paying attention. If you're, if you're watching later or you're watching right now live, this is one where you want to um, unminimize the screen. A lot of people listen while they work. You're going to want to get the visual on this. This is fantastic. Uh, okay. <laughs> For this is when you're spending a little too much time uh, with your coworkers. Uh, so let's go with this first one here. Let's throw this up here. Oh, boy. So this is where... Uh, somebody's bored, or they're just a really fun person. They thought, I'm going to mess with this person. This this person got Biebered, which I didn't know was a thing until just right now. But look at that. There, We got some old school Bieber there with the flip hair. Uh, I don't see any current tatted up Bieber. So it looks like this person loves them some Bieber, or they dislike Bieber. We don't know what's going on here. We don't have the rest of the story, do we? Okay, they either love Biebs, or they don't like Bieber, and somebody decided to jack with them. By the way, throw that back up one more time, please. Um, I'm not saying, I'm saying it's about 50% of that, but if you go to Nathan's desk right now, that's what it looks like, 50% of that. He didn't want me to tell anybody that. I always give him love for the Viking stuff, but Nathan, the director, really loves him some Biebs and used to have that, that picture up there on the far, if you're looking at that directly on the left side there, top of the cube, uh, that's what Nathan looked like in junior high school. So. Oh, you know I'm a believer. Yeah. <laughs> I kid, folks. I jest. Uh, Nathan does not have any of that stuff on his desk. But it would be a fun idea if I did that to your desk. All right, next. Uh, how about feeling festive? Kind of kind of feeling excited? You love, you love the movie Up? Well, this might happen to you. Oh, wow. Uh, this is great. Now, see, that to me is a fun prank. Because there's no damage being done. And even if it bothers you a little bit, you walk in, that's your office, and you come up to that, you've been in a meeting for two hours, you walk up, you see that, it's kind of fun. Who doesn't want to walk into a bunch of balloons? All right, how about this one? The next one, just in time for Christmas. Oh, wow. They turned their cube into an actual living, breathing present. Now, I'm going to say this really quickly. That gives me a lot of anxiety because I am terrible at wrapping presents. In fact, this year, Amanda, if you remind me, I need to take a picture or video me wrapping Stacy's presents because she wraps everybody else's, but then I got to wrap mom's and I got to get Josie into that. I don't know why I'm not asking Josie to help me, my 13 year old daughter. I, that, you know what? I'm retiring, but you should see me wrapping Stacy's presents. It is abysmal. Uh, okay. Next. Now this is not, this is not nice. This I would file under cruel. Seriously. You're going to do that to your coworker. That's wrong. Because of the emotional transfer that just happened. They walk up, they see the Krispy Kreme donuts, arguably the greatest donut ever made, and they think, oh, 
Hubba Bubba. Oh, baby, I'm about ready to jump into that. And there it is, the veggie tray. I would need therapy. Joe would for sure. Now, let me tell you what happened to me. You'd do that to me and I'd go, oh, man, and I'd love the joke. And I would grab a celery and I would grab a carrot and I would double dip into the ranch uh, just to get them back uh, because I love some ranch on some celery and carrots. All right, so that's fun. Okay, how about this one? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's my desk. <laughs> now, this is Joe Hankin level prank because Joe would be the guy that would figure out how to actually do all that and not destroy the office. Because there's a lot going on in that picture there. They've got the full desk, the chair, at least five feet off the ground, hanging from the tiles. I'm impressed. Yeah, that's impressive. And then finally, when you want to make your coworker jump 10 feet, in the air oh no the air horn underneath the chair taped to it so that when they sit down it's notice the creativity there they've got the the squeeze button there or whatever you call that just perfectly underneath the seat so that when the natural weight comes down air horn goes off and uh i'm not sure anybody's jumping but i'll tell you what else might happen could be a little potty accident Depending on the situation, you want to make your coworker pee their pants. That might be the way to do it. Oh my goodness, the air horn! I love it. Hey Ken. Yes. We got uh, we got one more for you. You got one more? Yeah. Oh boy. Now this is a surprise to me. So this feels like Nathan's up to something. Uh, there it is, Ken Coleman on. The- Look familiar? Dude, that's Blake Corum, our star running back, and you managed to put my face on that. Okay. A, that's funny, and B, you made my day. Could you please text that to me so that I can share that on social media? Uh, that is all kinds of fantastic right there. And by the way, I've never been a tattoo guy, but Amanda, at this point, I'm thinking maybe I would look good with a tattoo. I think so. I think so. And by the way, that's a super fast Photoshop work while running the show. I know. I Nathan is very talented. Folks, if you've ever wondered if I'm surrounded by talent, uh, there is yet another indicator that i you guys are great fun show today good stuff love the crew awesome stuff all right hey i gotta get out of here but before i do remember this you matter and you do have what it takes until next time this is the ken coleman show go blue and press on